uniformed police officers. It has 360 degree cameras and it talks. Hello, I am the K5 robot. I am here to patrol and record video for your safety. And a button to call 311. This call may be recorded for quality purposes. My name is Elisa Hosanowski In September, Mayor Eric Adams announced that the city would be leasing the robot from the security and robotics company Nightscope for $9 an hour. We're going to keep us safe no matter which way we do it. (laughs) The robot's patrolling the Times Square subway station between midnight and 6 a.m. Maggie Malone says that doesn't make her feel safer. I don't feel like it's safe at all. I'd rather have a person than a machine. 19-year-old Elias Ferris says he wouldn't use the robot even in an emergency. I feel like I'm more likely to call 911 if I feel like I'm in trouble than I would like run up to the robot and like like smack it on the on the face. The robot was supposed to be walking its beat solo this month, but police say the timeline's been pushed back to give the robot more time to learn its way around. Bahar Ostaran, WNYC News. WNYC is supported by the New York Community Trust. Listeners can champion the causes they care about for generations through charitable gifts and their wills with the New York Community Trust. Learn more at thetrust.nyc. By the numbers, Chinese food has never been more popular. You can now expect to find one Chinese restaurant in at least 70% of all U.S. counties. And the tastes available are every bit as diverse as the country it comes from. Next time on 1A, we explore Chinese culinary culture, its mythical and historical past and why it's now a firm American favorite. Weekdays at 3 on 93.9 FM, AM 820, or live stream it at WNYC.org. And you're listening to WNYC. I'm Tiffany Hansen. Good morning. We do have a big travel day ahead of us today for the Thanksgiving holiday. And commuters, you should also note that subways really kind of backed up. Heavy, plentiful delays on all on all train lines at this point. So check your commute before heading out. The Marketplace Morning Report is coming up next, so stay with us from that for that. And then 10 minutes from now at 9 o'clock, it will be the BBC News Hour. So let's check in to see what they're working on. Good morning, London. Good morning, WNYC. I'm Nuala McGovern. A potential glimmer of hope with reports that Hamas and Israel could be close to a temporary ceasefire that could lead to the release of hostages and also Palestinian prisoners. That's BBC News Hour coming up at 9 on WNYC. And let's see, we have 37 degrees currently in the city with a fair sky. There's a small chance for afternoon shower moving into the forecast after 4 o'clock. Increasing clouds throughout the day today. Today's high near 51. Tonight, rain, breezy, temperatures rising into the mid-50s. Overnight tonight, that rain lingers into the morning. Should be out of the way mostly by mid-morning, mid to late morning tomorrow. Tomorrow's high again in the mid-50s right now. 37 degrees in the city with a fair sky. It's WNYC at 8.51. One of the great gifts is knowing what you want to do with yourself. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Total Wine and More, where shoppers can find a great Cabernet, bourbon, or sparkling wine for everyone on their list this holiday season. Total Wine and More. Drink responsibly. Be 21. I'm David Brancaccio in New York. First, the microblogging and advertising platform X has filed a lawsuit against a critic. It is suing a nonprofit called Media Matters for publishing a report about anti-Semitism on X that can play near advertising on the platform. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer joins me now with details. Nancy, the MediaMatters.org report has led some companies to pull their advertising from X. What did it say? Media Matters says IBM and Apple have pulled their advertising from X. Media Matters says X placed ads from numerous companies next to, quote, content that touts Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party. In a statement, IBM says it suspended all advertising on X, quote, while we investigate this entirely unacceptable situation. And what does X have to say about this? 
The lawsuit says Media Matters, quote, knowingly and maliciously manufactured side-by-side images depicting advertisers' posts on X Corp's social media platform beside neo-Nazi and white nationalist fringe content. The lawsuit says Media Matters portrayed those images as typical for X. Media Matters responded to Musk's criticism by calling him a bully who threatens meritless lawsuits. And all of this comes as Musk is criticized for his full-throated endorsement of another person's tweet that was both anti-Semitic and denigrated minority groups more generally. Yet last week, Musk tweeted, you have said the actual truth in response to a tweet promoting an anti-Semitic theory that Jews supported hatred against whites. Musk later tweeted that he was not anti-Semitic. All right, Nancy, thank you. Other news media are reporting that Bravo, Oracle, and Xfinity have also pulled ads from the platform formerly known as Twitter. Checking markets here, S&P futures are down a quarter of a percent. Dow futures are down two-tenths percent. NASDAQ futures down four-tenths percent. Ten-year interest rate, 4.43 percent now, the lowest since September. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Schwab. Schwab knows that investors want control of their financial future. That's why when it comes to wealth management, Schwab is dedicated to giving investors more choices. More at schwab.com. Things we hope you can be thankful for this week for Thanksgiving. The sense that you know what you're wanting to do with your life. I wanted to share you uh, with you a moment drawn from my reporting this year for our Skin in the Game project about what the massive video game industry can teach us about economics, careers, and equity. Game companies know they need a more diverse talent pool, and we've been focusing on a nonprofit mentoring program in Oakland, California called Game Heads that teaches video games and multimedia arts to a diverse group of local high school and college students. Now, I visited in the spring when the student team started working on their video games and came back some months later to see what they had produced. One of the teams had done what seemed almost impossible. They figured out how to build for themselves a massive multiplayer game that could include players real-time anywhere in the world. One guy named Trevor Cardoza was on the team who'd gone through Game Heads and stayed connected. He'd been laid off from his first tech job in the spring. What would be your dream job, I asked the team. And the answers came fast and furious, starting with Trevor. Since we last spoke, I have actually picked up a job. I'm currently a technical gameplay designer at Crystal Dynamics. Um, And that is basically my dream job. I do want to actually continue with that. We definitely focus on like one or two projects at a time, not a million things scatterbrained. So it's a really good, great culture and I'm loving it so far. I'm Jude and right now I'm targeting product management. That's like the area that I really want to get into. I love the game industry. It's really cool. So a product manager on any of the big game companies would be like my ideal role right now. I'm Matt. And the funny thing is I'm already working as a game designer at Lost Boys Interactive. And recently we did ship uh, WWE 23 as one of the titles. Uh, Yes, I'm Melissa and I would have to say um, definitely technical artist. It's a really look for role right now. And it has more to do with like programming and art at the same time, which is like a rare talent that usually people have. I'm Ryan, I'm the gameplay programmer, and I guess I would want to go into a field similar to technical design, gameplay programming, software engineering. Computers are kind of my thing. I love to program, see what I type, like, you know, I want to bring it alive. I want to see things happen when I hit that enter button, and (laughs) I just don't see myself doing anything else. I'm Shadozi, and I think my goal is to do anything that's sound creation. So my main thing, my main focus right now is music, but I would be super into making like Foley sounds for uh, video games, you know, TV, anime, I'm really into movies. So anything that's music based. My name is Abdu. I'm studying applied math in college. I've been working as a chef for the past two years. I just can't, (laughs) I can't choose one thing except for game design. You can encompass everything into a game. For example, if suddenly one day I decided maybe I want to be an astronaut, I can make a game about being an astronaut. And it's kind of this kind of fluidity that allows me to be who I am in this space. 
Yeah, uh, I'm Jordan. I would really like to go into narrative consulting. I've done a lot of things throughout my life in a lot of different areas of work from teaching to architecture to sports and coaching. So I have knowledge in a lot of areas and narrative design is a place where I can really pull that together and create a world within the, the game using all of the things that I know about. And especially as a person of color, in the game development industry, there's a lot of stories that people try to tell that involve people of color and they don't always do a great job. So I want to get my hands in there and help studios tell stories about my people that they don't really know how to tell. The Gamehead students you heard are Trevor Cardoza, Jude Herbert, Matt Zhang, Melissa Romo Martinez, Ryan Ramos, Chidozi Ibe, Abdu Sek, and Jordan Dabney. All of our Skin in the Game videos are streamable from Marketplace.org. If you know someone interested in going into video game production who likes to click on YouTube videos, Marketplace's Alex Schroeder and Erica Soderstrom produced that segment. In New York, I'm David Brancaccio with our morning report. We're from APM, American Public Media.